When it comes to putting this in practice in the tower, it's not at all easy. The big problem is to acquire rope sight, that is to see the other ropes that are falling as I ring, and to pull my bell into its correct position in relation to the others. It's a good thing Mike's here to keep me on the right track. And it's comforting to see others having the same problems. We're now well into change ringing, and it's a world of new sounds, described by ancient terminology, Canterbury surprise, Oxford bob triples, and Grand Sir triples. These we'll use to ring in the new year. It's a seven bell method, so the tenor, the eighth bell, sets our pace. I hope we'll be good enough when the time arrives, and by golly, the weeks are closing in now. Well, the great night has finally arrived. One of the local radio stations has caught the spirit of the thing, and they're making a live transmission of us, ringing in the new year and I see we're already on the air, and that some of us are going to talk about this, our most unusual hobby. The announcer at the mic asked what the soft tuft in the rope is for. It's certainly never seen on any other rope than except for bell ringing. Francie reminds the listeners that it's been five years since the peal was last heard over Vancouver of the original band of ringers. Most of them have passed away. And all of us are wondering how our efforts will compare with those old days. It's almost midnight. Our ringing master takes the tenor, which will toll the 12 strokes of midnight. This is it.
Well, we've done it. Behind us, months of work, sometimes very discouraging. But now all well worth it as we ring in the new year together. I've gained a new hobby and new friends, and with them, I'm glad to be part of an old art and tradition, taking its place as one of the crafts and customs of this new world.